Hi, I'm Andrew Sheps, and welcome to Sheps Omni Channel 2. When the original Omni Channel came out, the idea was to get all of the stuff that I use in a channel strip type format in one window. Now we've taken that idea and we've pushed the envelope to get it more into the sculpting and sound design arena, as well as all the classic tools you're used to. We've added a fourth saturation mode called Crush, which is a very heavy bit of distortion, goes well beyond anything we've had before. We've added a 24 dB per octave filter with a lot of resonance. This is a very cool, almost sound design filter as opposed to just a utility filter. We've added a soft mode to the compressor, which is a soft knee, which gives you a completely different feel than the three we already had before. And we've added the ability to host any VST3 plugin instead of just the Waves plugins you were able to host before. Now that we've talked about the new features, let's hear them. So I'm using a song that you may remember from the Omni Channel 1 videos. This is a band called Holloway and the song is called Sound the Alarm. I'm gonna play you a little bit of uh, the verse. Why not? And then into the chorus, and then we're going to be using the audio in this session for all the examples. So there you have it. Nice rock track, classic tracks in terms of multi-mic drum kit, lots of guitars, lots of vocals, um, and some very aggressive bass, which I like quite a bit. So... This mix actually is different from the mix that you heard in the original Omni Channel video because I remixed it with Omni Channel 2, and I think I took out probably 60% of the other plugins I was using, which was the goal, is that I could actually do most of my mix just within Omni Channel 2. So it's kind of scary how many there are in this session right now, but I'm not complaining at all. So the first thing I want to do is show you a bit of how you can use the resonance in the high pass filter to actually sculpt the low end of a sound. So rather than just filtering out low frequencies you don't want to really focus the low end, so you're getting rid of things below where you want to focus, but really featuring what you want to do. So here is the kick drum as I have it now, and I'm going to open up the UI of the plugin. And what you can see is I've got the filter in at 24 dB per octave, that's the new one. And I have the frequency set to 32. So 32 hertz will now become the resonant frequency of the kick drum. And then the resonance, which is down here, this is a new control, will control how much of the boost I'm gonna get at 30 hertz. So if you imagine you've got a flat frequency response and then you start going down with a traditional high pass filter at whatever the slope is that you've set it to, what this resonance will do is to give you a bump before you go down. So the higher you turn the resonance, the steeper the peak will be before you start your 24 dB per octave filter. So here is the kick drum without the filter. And here is the kick drum with the filter. It's a dramatic difference. Now you may not want all of that low end on your kick drum all the time, but what I'm gonna do now is I'll start sweeping that frequency and changing the resonance so you can hear what happens just working between sort of 30 and 60 hertz and the resonance, what I'll do is I'll start with it all the way down so you're basically fading in that boost. Let's find a different frequency first. So now we're up at 50 hertz, so almost an octave above where we were. I'm gonna take the resonance all the way down. So it's pretty dramatic what you can do. And what's great about it is if you were just using a straight, either parametric or shelf for the low end EQ, with a shelf, you'd be turning up everything, even below the frequency you want to focus on. And even with a parametric, you're turning up only what is there. So if there isn't any information at 30 hertz, but that's really what you want to hear at the bottom of your kick drum, you could be adding 12, 14 dB, and that's going to be bringing up a lot of the tom bleed, that sort of thing. 
And it also may not be the best sounding thing, the best sounding drum or recording at that frequency. When you're using the resonance on the filter, you're essentially creating audio at that frequency. It, it is done by EQ, but the ringing of the filter also creates information at that frequency. It's sort of the opposite of the idea of using harmonic distortion to create upper harmonics. This is almost like adding a fundamental out of thin air. And once again, let me put this back down to 30, which I like better, and I'll turn that resonance up from zero so you can hear how that adds this frequency without actually changing the rest of the kick drum. Now you could hear a little bit of the top end going away when I had the resonance all the way up. That's just because of dynamic processing further down the chain, both in this plugin and some of the other stuff. As the kick got really, really loud, it was hitting those compressors harder, but you could really hear that 30 hertz start to be a feature of the kick drum. Works really, really well. The next thing I wanna show you, which I'm very excited about, is the new crush mode in the saturation module of the preamp. So I'm using it as a parallel distortion on the entire drum kit. This is something I do all the time is to have distortion parallel on the drum kit. It adds body, it adds harmonic content, but what it also does is add some length to the drum kit without using reverb or without having to overwork room mics, which may or may not even sound good depending on the recording. It may not be what you want to add length to the drums. Distortion is a fantastic way to get a little bit of extra length. And notice on this preamp, it's turned all the way up. Because it's a parallel, I can go absolutely crazy with it. Now, if you go too far or you drive this with more level than I am right now, you'll start to get into some really cool and really awesome artifacts that you may or may not want. It almost acts like a wave folder when you overload it. But this is basically the distortion as we built it but nothing but the distortion. So I'm gonna play the drums and mute it, put it back in, and then we will solo it up. Okay, it's pretty extreme. I'm gonna turn it back down where I had it so you can hear it more in context of what it would be, but I wanted you to hear what it's doing. So a lot of times people will talk about glue for a drum kit. This is exactly that sort of thing. When we take it out, the kick and snare sound fine. And in the context of the track, they may work fine the way they were, but this really makes it sound like a drum kit and not just individual microphones. So you can hear what that is. This is with the drum kit muted. In reality, if you wanna do a lo-fi rock record, that might be your drum sound, but adding that in parallel on a more standard rock kit really gives it some beef, some glue, some whatever you wanna call it. I call it good. Okay, now I wanna show you a combination of the high-pass filter with some resonance, but then also the new soft mode in the compressor, and I'm gonna show you that using some rhythm guitars because who doesn't like rhythm guitars? So the first thing, because we've already talked about it, I'm gonna quickly show you what the filter is doing to add body to these guitars. I've got the thump automating, so I'm using the 2 dB boost. This is the very wide boost at around 100 hertz that is in the original Omni channel. And then on top of that, I'm adding this high pass filter, which is set to 125 hertz, and I'm using the resonance to add more of that body. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna bother taking the thump in and out, but here is with and without the filter. It's just good. I love getting those frequencies to come out in guitars, especially rhythm guitars. To me, it feels more like the cabinet 
and more like the room without having it be a room mic. Because one of the problems on a track like this is if you use too much of a room mic, you start losing the presence in the guitars. You need that mid-range presence you get from close miking. And so this works really, really well to bring them out. I'll put them in context. It's gonna be sort of a subtle change, but I think you'll hear that the rhythm guitars really help support the song instead of just acting like an overdub to the drums and bass. And what those extra low mids do is something that I'm always trying to do in my mixes, which is to fill the gap between the guitars and the bass. Because if you can make them really act as a unit, even if they're playing different parts, it just makes the sonic space of the mix even top to bottom. Uh, and it's something I really, really like to do. And then you do the same thing in the mid-range with the vocals once you get there. So that is yet another use of the high-pass filter. The other thing I'm doing with the rhythm guitars is I'm using the new compressor model, the Soft Knee. It's a little bit subtle, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the threshold down so you can kind of hear it going. And then I'll switch models so you can hear the difference. Now, obviously, rhythm guitars are more of a steady state instrument, and that's what I'm using it for, is to really just put it more in a package. So it's not gonna be the sort of compression you're gonna get on a transient instrument like drums, something like that, but you'll still hear the difference. So it's just how the picking and the top end react to the compressor that's different. And this is a great model for things that are more steady state. It really works well on vocals. But I can also come back up to the drums, where we have another omni-channel, and let's just listen to some compression, shall we? And I'll even take out the drums dirt, so that all we're really listening for is what it does to the transients of the drum kit. So going back and forth between the opto and the soft, you can hear a complete difference both in the transients, but also what's happening to the cymbals in between. The soft keeps the relative balance between the transients and the steady state stuff, in this case the cymbals, a little bit more, but you also can hear some of that really cool, slightly slower compression as you get through the soft knee on the transients. So a very different model. So that is a good example of the soft compressor. Now, I'm gonna show you some stuff on the vocals. So, on the vocals themselves, what's in this mix is basically a lot of the traditional omni-channel stuff that's going on. I'm using the soft compressor once again. Um, I think we've heard that really well with the guitars and also with the drums. But one of the things I wanted to show you is we've talked about how the high-pass filter resonance can be really useful for creating frequency content at a certain point. The low pass filter is exactly as useful. So what I'm doing is I'm using it to actually create some air on the vocals. So I'm gonna play you the vocals and then I'm going to take this filter in and out. And what you'll hear is almost like what you get out of using the Aphex plugin, where it's, it's synthesizing top end, but it's in a very, very different way than the Aural Exciter harmonics. Here we go. It's not subtle. I think it sounds really, really good. And just so you know what the settings are on this. So what I'm doing is I'm low pass filtering at 9.1K and then I've got the resonance way up. The resonance is up at 1.3. One of the other things I wanted to mention is that these resonant controls, which are now front and center in the UI, are not just for the new resonant 24 dB per octave filter, they're also available for the 12 and the 18 dB per octave. The original omni-channel had that set at one. 
So the resonance was just set at one when you were in 12 or 18, but now you have the option to actually change that. Now it's not nearly as extreme because the filter is different. So you're not gonna be generating as many harmonics. It's not gonna ring in the same way, but it does give you more control. Obviously when you open up an old session, they will default to one, everything will sound exactly like it used to. Uh, then the next thing I'm going to show you is a different version of what I did with the drum crush for vocals. So this is some distortion as a parallel process for the vocals. I'm not using it in quite as an aggressive way as I am on the drums, but it does add some width to the vocals. So again, I'm going to solo up the vocals and I'll start with the dirt out. And here is the chorus without it. Leave it all alone. You've been in your head for too long. And with it. Leave it all alone. You've been in your head for too long. Paranoia's got the best of you. And just so you can hear it on its own, I'll make this pre and mute the send to it. Leave it all alone. You've been in your head for too long. Paranoia's so I'm filtering on the way in, I'm filtering on the way out, and I'm using the new crush mode in the preamp. There's actually nothing else in, in this plugin. But what it's doing, again, like with the drums, it gives you some sustain, but also some aggression, and it works really well to give you more presence in the vocals. So let me just take it in and out in the track again. So that presence without just being EQ really helps the vocals stay in the track. They never disappear behind the guitars or the cymbals. So the last thing I want to do is just remind you of the insert feature on the Omni Channel. So this, again, has been in the Omni Channel since the very beginning, but Omni Channel 2 allows you to host any VST3 plugin. So you're not limited to things that run natively in your DAW. Any VST3 on the planet will run inside of this. And it's, I would imagine, not used as much as I use it out in the wild because it's something that you don't necessarily think about a channel strip doing is hosting a reverb. But what it gives you is the ability to have all your pre and post processing for something like a reverb in one window, which is the goal of this plugin. So I'm using it for reverb on the snare right now. And basically I am using a Waves plugin, but if I open up the window here for all of the things I could put in, you'll notice there's VST3 at the bottom. Open that up, you see all the manufacturers. You can even search within your VST3 plugins and then insert it. So in this instance, I'm using one of my favorite reverb plugins for this kind of chore. It is the reverb pedal out of the Stomp series of Waves plugins. And what I'm doing is I'm wrapping it inside of some processing. I'm using the gate, the expander first. So this is taking out any drum bleed that happens to be on the snare track. So only the snare transients make it into the reverb. Then on the way out, I'm adding some top end and I'm filtering out some low end using the 18 dB per octave filter and adding some saturation just using the heavy. And that's what's going on pre and post the EQ. And this is what it sounds like. So you can hear the snare once again gets a little world that it can live in, but it's made from the close mic and it is gated so that only the transients get this treatment as opposed to it just adding reverb to the kit or using a microphone that's further away from the snare that's picking up lots of other stuff. So in context, it's subtle. And generally what I do is I will automate this to only be on in choruses and things like that because it just adds a little extra oomph that will make the snare keep up with the rest of the kit that's getting distortion with all the guitars that are coming in. They're usually more vocals. So this keeps the snare from sounding dry right when the rest of the track gets big. And without.
Again, it's subtle, but that extra length for me really ties it into the rest of the drum kit, because otherwise it starts to just pop out, because there's plenty of transient, but that sustain is what it needs to fit in with the rest of the kit. And one thing that isn't necessarily a feature, but that you do get with the plug-in, is a new set of focus presets. So you'll notice on my kick plug in here, I'm actually working off of my own focus preset that I built, and the controls that I feel are the most important in the way it's set up for you to mess with it and really understand what's going on are highlighted in blue. So for kick, it's all about the frequency and the resonance on that high pass filter, and then it's about this de that is set down around 100 and 18, as it turns out. What this does is it gets rid of some of the low mid boxiness that lets you really hear the low end and that new fundamental you've created, but without taking up a huge amount of room down there. All right, I think we've covered all of the new features in Omni Channel 2. I am super excited about it, and I have to tell you, since I got a beta where I knew we weren't gonna change the sonics on it, I've been using it all day, every day. It's on every mix I've done since we had it. Um, hope you enjoyed as much as I do, and thanks. Thank you.